Case 19, Kent v. Dulles. This case takes place at the Supreme Court of the United States. Facts. At a time when an act of Congress required a passport for foreign travel by citizens, if a state of national emergency had been declared by the President, and when the proclamation necessary to make the act effective had been made, the Secretary of State denied passports to petitioners because of their alleged communistic beliefs and associations and their refusal to file affidavits concerning presence or past membership in the Communist Party. This case concerns two applications for passports, both of which were denied by the Secretary of State John Foster Dulles. One of the passport applicants was Rockwell Kent, who desired to visit England and attend a meeting of an organization known as the World Council of Peace in Helsinki, Finland. The director of the passport office informed Kent that issuance of a passport was precluded by the regulations promulgated by the Secretary of State on two grounds. One, that he was a communist, and two, that he had had a consistent and prolonged adherence to the Communist Party line. Kent was told that before a passport would be issued, he would need to submit an affidavit as to whether he was then or ever had been a communist. Both defendants took the position that the requirement of an affidavit concerning Communist Party membership was unlawful. The Secretary of State argued that the law gave him the discretion to refuse issuance of a passport. What's the issue? Whether the Secretary of State was authorized to deny the passports to individuals because of their alleged communistic beliefs and associations and their refusal to file affidavits concerning present or past membership in the Communist Party. The Holding The Court held that the Secretary of State was not authorized to deny the passports for these reasons, under the Act of July 3, 1926, or Section 215 of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952. The Supreme Court reversed the opinion of the lower court. Here's the reasoning. The right to travel is a part of the liberty of which a citizen cannot be deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment. The broad power of the Secretary under 22 U.S. Code 211A to issue passports which has long been considered discretionary, has been construed generally to authorize the refusal of a passport only when the applicant, one, is not a citizen or a person owing allegiance to the United States, or two, was engaging in criminal or unlawful conduct. This court hesitates to impute to Congress when in 1952 it made a passport necessary for foreign travel and left its issuance to the discretion of the Secretary of State, a purpose to give him unbridled discretion to withhold a passport from a citizen for any substantive reason he may choose. No question concerning the exercise of the war power is involved in this case. If a citizen's liberty to travel is to be regulated, it must be pursuant to the lawmaking functions of Congress. Any delegation of the power must be subject to adequate standards, and such delegated authority will be narrowly construed. The Act of July 3, 1926, and Section 215 of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 do not delegate to the Secretary authority to withhold passports to citizens because of their beliefs or associations, and any act of Congress purporting to do so would raise grave constitutional questions. The only act of Congress expressly curtailing the movement of communists across our borders, Section 2 and 6 of the Internal Security Act of 1950, has not yet become effective, because the Communist Party has not registered under that act, and there is not in effect a final order of the board requiring it to do so. Travel abroad, like travel within the country, may be necessary for a livelihood. It may be as close to the heart of the individual as the choice of what he eats 
or wears or reads. Freedom of movement is basic in our scheme of values. Our nation, wrote Chaffee, has thrived on the principle that outside areas of plainly harmful conduct, every American is left to shape his own life as he thinks best, do what he pleases, and go where he pleases. Freedom of movement also has large social values. As Chaffee put it, Foreign correspondents and lecturers on public affairs need first-hand information. Scientists and scholars gain greatly from consultations with colleagues in other countries. Students equip themselves for more fruitful careers in the United States by instruction in foreign universities. Then there are reasons close to the core of personal life. Marriage, reuniting families, spending hours with old friends. Finally, travel abroad enables American citizens to understand that people like themselves live in Europe and helps them to be well informed on public issues. An American who has crossed the ocean is not obliged to form his opinions about our foreign policy merely from what he is told by officials of our government or by a few correspondents of American newspapers. Moreover, his views on domestic questions are enriched by seeing how foreigners are trying to solve similar problems. In many different ways, direct contact with other countries contributes to sounder decisions at home. This quotation is so expressive of the benefits of travel that are apparently embedded in the Constitution. <laughs>